Welcome to this rapid revision session on the Plains Indians. First of all, it's important to recognize that the Plains Indians are not one people. There were loads and loads of different tribes, and unfortunately, I'm going to be talking in real generalizations here and actually mostly focusing on one, one tribe in particular. So I'm sorry about that. Um, it's the nature of the course, and well, I think I've run out of excuses now. But without further ado, let's have a look at some of the main points. The First Nations. This is a term that in more modern times has been used to describe the Plains Indians and other groups of indigenous Americans. For them, America was a, as a country didn't actually exist. Each tribe had its own customs and traditions like a nation. The Sioux were threatened by other tribes and settlers in the East, so they moved. Settlers brought diseases like measles. The Indians lacked the immunity to fight this, so they fled. And the Indians gained horses, which made journeys west possible, particularly from the Spanish early on. Also, the Plains Indians um, found that the plains were largely empty, but full of buffalo to hunt, which provided abundant resources for them. Our studies are going to be focused on the Lakota. We haven't got time to study all of the Plains Indians nations, so we're going to focus on one, the Lakota Sioux. The Lakota had a fascinating and varied culture. They were nomadic, following the buffalo across the plains. They could be warlike. They had great respect for nature, ancestors, and what they called Wakantanka, or the Great Spirit. They had their own culture, religion, language, and customs. We're going to have a look at a few aspects now. The buffalo. The plains buffalo, which is actually a bison, but we always call it a buffalo, was vital to the survival of many Native American tribes on the plains. Here is one. Firstly, the bones and horn could be used for many things, including being shaped into arrowheads. The skins, or hides, could be tanned into strong leather for clothing, making teepees, and for many other things as well. The coarse tongue could be dried and used as a comb. Stomachs, intestines and the bladder could be cleaned, dried and turned into water carrying bottles and buckets. That was vital given that they might not encounter a water source for many days. Buffalo meat was an important food source. The blood, while fresh, could be drunk. And the Indians used all parts of the buffalo, but they would always use something behind for the great spirit as an offering. Other animals would scavenge these remains. It shows how much the Plains Indians respected nature, which they relied upon for their survival. In short, bit equals ABC. The bones were used for arrowheads. Intestines were used for buckets and bottles. And tanned hides, or the tongue, could be used for cloves and combs. That's a handy way of remembering some of the main uses of the buffalo for the Indians. These were large, dangerous and powerful animals. Hunting them was risky, but they became incredibly skilled in bringing them down. The teepee. Plains Indians tribes were nomadic. They needed a practical and portable place to live. The teepee was made from light but strong waterproof and windproof structure made from wooden poles and buffalo hide. An adjustable vent at the top could regulate the safe burning of a fire inside for warmth, cooking and rituals. The teepee was quick to assemble, compact and light to carry and perfect for a nomadic lifestyle. Some tribes used teepees in warmer months and retreated to more permanent lodges in winter. Teepees were usually decorated, expressing the pride and identity of the people. A whole extended family might live in a single teepee. They were, these were important for community, comfort and religion. In short, they were a home. People could move them as they followed the buffalo across the plains. Some tribes would abandon the old and sick as they moved on, but not out of cruelty. This was done with consent and was seen as an honourable way to return to the Great Spirit whilst helping to ensure the survival of the tribe. Warfare. Different tribes could compete over the scarce resources of the plains. Warfare and learning to fight was an important rite of passage for many Indian boys and men. The scalp was sometimes taken as a trophy from defeated enemies. In rare instances, these were taken from living foes who survived the ordeal, at least for a short time. Horses had first been traded with Spanish colonists, but had become an important part of Indian warfare and tactics. Raiding enemy tribes and camps were considered honourable, including taking horses. But it wasn't always about killing. It wasn't always necessary, or indeed honourable, to kill enemies. A warrior could show their bravery by getting in killing range, touching their opponents, sometimes with a stick as shown here, and escaping. This was known as counting coup. Religion. Indian religion was varied and differed from tribe to tribe, but these are some common ideas. Much of Indian religion was a belief in animism, 
Nature was sacred and all things were spiritual. Tribes had spiritual people, sometimes called medicine men. Medicine can refer specifically to spiritual healing, but it had far wider spiritual meanings. The Lakota believed in Wakantanka, the idea of the great spirit or great mystery. This wasn't a god, more an expression of the spiritual in all things. Music and drums were important in ceremonies, as were chants. Sacred pipes were smoked in many ceremonies too. And various dances were performed. The buffalo dance was believed to bring fortune in the vital buffalo hunt. The sun dance, which is pictured here, involves suffering and pain as a sacrifice for one's people. Later, the ghost dance was a desperate plea for the survival of the Indian way of life. Europeans rarely understood these practices, or sometimes viewed them as barbaric. Lastly, there were rituals surrounding naming. In some cultures, young people would get their adult name based on a vision that they would seek in the wilderness. For example, Sitting Bull's name refers to a vision of a buffalo aggressively rearing up to kick. Perfect for a warrior. Final points then. There were a large number of different tribes all over the North American continent. The Lakota were nomadic. They relied on the buffalo as a source of food and survival equipment and materials. The teepee was a practical and portable home. Tribes could be warlike, including towards other tribes. Plains Indians' religion was based on Wakantanka and the sacredness in all things. They respected and relied upon nature. I hope that short summary was useful to you. If it was, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got anything that you're desperate for me to cover in these rapid revision sessions, comment that down below. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.